Oh my gosh, fellas, the time is now. We got MLW coming out of the gate on fire. We got Fast Plastic looking to be heating up again. I'm sure all of you guys are playing in y'all owns leagues. And of course, the Palisades WBL is looking to have their best season ever. And, oh my gosh, the Wiffle Life. It's amazing right now. Andy, that's my boy! Yeah, baby. So before we actually get into summer and the football season is still young, I am going to list my top five teams in the Palisades right now. And even though I'm only listing, you know, five out of the 11 teams, rest assured that doesn't mean I think the other teams are trash. Not at all. I just thought for this ranking, I narrowed it down to five to make it simpler. So the defending champs are on this list, however, they just sneak in at my number 5 spot. Other than the trade of Phil Forcella, which I discuss in another video, the Giants remain basically the same team they were last year. And honestly, that's not a bad thing. The Miguel Rath brothers continue to power through the plate as the two have a combined 14 RBIs out of the team's RBI total of 17, and it looks like pitching will once again not be an issue as Fisher and Ryan McGillrath have combined 15 innings pitched and are yet to give up a run. Then they decide to start Hannon against the Expos and he got roughed up as the Expos would score 7 on him. However, the season is still young and if Hannon can develop into a solid starter and the team as a whole can bring their average up from its current uh, kind of dismal 197 average, then the Giants could definitely have a repeat year. However, they're going to have some fierce competition. The Padres return in 2018 looking the exact same as they did in 2017. Well, I mean, minus the new uniforms. Love them, by the way, guys. They're really nice. Anyways, their lack of change over the offseason can't really be seen as a negative, as their small three-man roster is a versatile juggernaut. Robles continues to deal, giving up only one run in 10 innings of work, and Kayvon did get roughed up his first game. However, he bounced back in his second start, and his track record of dominance is assuring that the Padres will have a very solid one-two punch on the carpet, with Sean Ryan as a potential number three. Now, the advantage of having a small three-man lineup is that you will be rotating the same hitters constantly. So if you have good hitters, then you're set, and the Padres do. Robles is hitting 316 and has also had a good eye at the plate, boasting seven walks. However, just as I said last year, the thing that makes the Padres a formidable squad is their ability to scrap out wins and keep themselves in games. And they're going to have to keep that grind going throughout the year and try to not have a midseason slump like they did last August. Ah yes, the Expos, the only team on this list with a losing record. Uh, let me address that first. The uh, first week, the Expos were without T-Wag, and instead threw in Nick Lee. And I mean, he looks like he just showed up for a couple games the past two years, so who cares? The reason I had the Expos in this spot is just the pure amount of talent. Even though their record doesn't show it right now, it seems impossible to me that this squad of grizzled veterans will miss the playoffs. Coming back from a year off, K-Rod is 10 for 25, and with Phil Forcello and Tyler Wegerzine filling out the lineup behind him, run production should not be a problem. Now, the variable that makes the Expos interesting is that right now, the only pitcher with a dub is waiver wire rookie pickup Pete Slater, who appears to be throwing some smoke out there. If he can become another starter to the decent rotation they have now, then they'd really have some nice pitching depth to work with as T-Wag pitched 59 innings last year, and I'm sure he'd welcome some relief in the form of Slater and Phil Frisella. So I guess we're just going to have to wait and see how this rotation works out. But honestly though, Expos, a lot of talent, a lot of potential. After coming out on the losing end of a hard-fought World Series, the Diamondbacks' move in the offseason was to add Rich Gallad to their lineup. Now, Galad is expected to pitch a little, I think, and will share those duties with the Torres brothers, who have proven themselves to be one of the best one-two punches in the league. Now, the big thing for the Diamondbacks is their hitting. While their team average right now is 157, I expect it to level out in the coming months. The D-backs really do have potential for a big murderer's row for pitchers to work through, in the form of Kenny Stingle, Rich Galad, and of course the Torres brothers. If these veterans can click and begin producing the numbers they should be at the plate, uh, then 
that should be more than enough to power them through games with some magnificent pitching from their three-man rotation of Galad and the Torres brothers. D-backs fans, I mean, get hyped because they're out for some redemption this year. And here we are, the number one spot with the Dodgers. I don't really know what to say, fellas. The amount of pure, raw talent and experience on this team is incredible. Starting off with Rob Wiffman Piervanazzi, who is arguably the best hitter in wiffle ball history and is already off to a good start this year with a 304 average. However, even ahead of him in batting, we have the very talented Johnny Costa, who's hitting 353. In addition to these two, we have the longtime veterans of the Palisades, Tim Trenary and Bo Mashinsky. Trenary is looking to be great on the carpet this year, as he is pitching to a .5 ERA with 25 strikeouts. Combined, he and Costa should be able to absolutely shut down other teams at the plate. And I mean, yeah, this lineup is just so packed full of raw talent and many years of experience on the carpet and at the plate. And just, I think it's going to be very hard for their competition to find an edge. That's going to do it for this ranking, fellas. And honestly, not just with the teams I discussed today, but in the Palisades overall right now, they are boasting, in, in my opinion, the best wiffle ball talent you can find in any league in the country right now. It's very impressive, and you don't want to miss any of the action. Below in the description are links for all things Palisades related, as well as a link to subscribe to my channel, which if you enjoy this video and want more Wiffle content, I hope you will. Until next time, boys, support the Wiffle community, enjoy summer, get out there, play some Wiff, and I'll be talking to you guys soon. Good. Awesome.